rapid fire. Coming in hot. Balls deep. We kind of changed up the format of our show, Paul. That escalated quickly. Uh, we'll kind of start from the top. Did you see what happened in the comment section the other day? No. Why? You're always in there. <laughs> well, I thought you were going to tell me something I didn't know. <laughs> what I miss? Uh, oh, God. Everybody's poking the bear in there. That's pretty nice. All right, let's start from the top. Uh, names of the D linemen who should be brought back for next year. We actually already talked about that in uh, an episode already this week. That was from John. Uh, so we already talked about the D linemen that were pending free agents. Uh, Daryl Williams, John Feliciano. So uh, you can check that out on D linemen. Oh, I was yeah, I, yeah, D linemen. Never mind. So D linemen should be brought back next year. So all right, so your uh, your defensive line, right? Daryl Johnson, Trent Murphy's gone, so he's off the list. Right, you're not bringing Trent Murphy back. That's just he's already if their contract expired, they're out of this conversation. Gotcha. Okay, so you got uh, Daryl Williams, uh, Justin Zimmer, uh, uh, Ed Oliver, Starla Tulele, uh, uh, AJ Abeneza, uh Mario Addison, uh, Quinnen Jefferson, Vernon Butler, and Harrison Phillips. So there's your nine. Right, Murphy was ten. So there's your nine. Okay, of those nine. You're bringing, you got to bring six back of those nine. Okay. Okay. We we, we don't go out of those. Restricted free agents and rookie deals I'm keeping. Okay. All right. So that's fine. Epineza. Phillips. Yep. Zimmer. Yep. Oliver. Okay. Okay. All right. So automatically you have three D tackles. Yes. And a DN. Yeah. Okay. So you got Addison's not making it. Okay. At least I don't think. I think. And it's a lot value, of money. It's a lot of money. You're gonna you, save a lot of money. You could you could get two. Could you could you get two role players that play the same position as him? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. Who else do we have in there? A star. Star's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. You're not I mean, he restructured his deal, even though he opted out. Yeah. Um. You saw. What his impact was on yep. this. I like Butler coming back. Yeah, no, I think I, I agree with you. So there. Butler, Addison, and Jefferson are all gone. I think so. All yeah. three? I think all three of them. Son are of gone a biscuit! Too. What's yeah. the money on that? Jeez. Uh, like eighteen mil. Shoo-hoo-hoo. Yeah, Butler and Jefferson are almost six. I mean, Butler, Jeff- Jefferson, and Addison. Addison would be six. Butler's right around there, and Jefferson's like eight. So it's a lot of money. You're saving a lot of money by letting those three guys go. And I think you do that. I think I think you just walk away from those Should guys. Should have Phillips. You know what? It would, would have been cheaper. It would have been cheaper. Only if Star played. played. You think so? I think he makes a big deal in there. Okay. That's, that's over. Because, um, I mean, this is where the joke ends, kind of. Because everyone knows I love Star. Everyone knows that I, I, I thought that he was severely underappreciated in this defense. But then you started to see the impact that he had when he wasn't there. Yeah. That's the true test of a guy that you could say, once we take him out of the lineup, how does he impact the team? Yeah. Like, for example, we don't know how Hyde plays without Poirier or without po- how Poirier plays without Hyde. Yeah. Neither one of them have missed significant time. I think Hyde missed one game. Without looking? Yeah, Hyde hasn't missed many and games. And Marlowe, it was against Tennessee two years ago. Oh, my God. Okay. She's pulled a candle for that game. All right. Oh, because Dean Marlowe played. Dean, I know why you remember this now. No, my point is this. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's, it's positive to remember because it's the only time that there was significant time that both of them did not play without each other. Yeah. Definitely. So you can't tell. Like, that's why trading them would be iffy because teams would be like, well, how does he play without Poirier? Why does he right. play without high? Yep. So that being said, we saw how this defense played without Latulale. Lodalele. Yolale. Um. So I think he comes back and he's appreciated. But Murphy, uh, like you said, his contract is part. He's gone. Addison, I think, is gone. Jefferson, I think, is gone. Butler, I think, is gone. Yeah, I agree. 
agree. But if Addison and Butler are gone, is Eric Washington? Is he the sacrificial lamb? I think, yeah. I think really? You're ready, I think you're ready to move on from that, whatever that experience was. Bean and McDermott have been really loyal to the Carolina guys. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're ready to go. Who you bringing in? Steve Wilkes. I, you know, I, you look at you look at Ed Oliver, right? You brought in Eric Washington to try to unlock Ed Oliver. I think Ed Oliver had a more positive season than last year. Yes. Um, but I think you're still looking to unlock the talent that is Ed Oliver, and I don't think Eric Washington spoke that language. So, I, if they fired Eric Washington, I would not be upset about that. So you go into next season, you have Zimmer, Phillips, Oliver, I'm, and Stark. I don't think Zimmer makes the team next year. You really don't think so? No, I don't think so. Okay. Just, just because they'll acquire more gonna, talent. They'll anymore? draft a third round. They'll draft a third or fourth round defensive tackle. Like it's just this is. Why draft one? Pick a free agent. At that point, you're there'll be hairs. a lot of veteran minimum deals for, yeah. for defensive tackles. There will be yeah. a lot. Yeah, and as you said, you stated the Bills or any team don't take all of the add on their cap. That's true. Veteran yep. deals. Veteran so. deals. You don't have to. We'll um, explain that soon. Uh, Rick, uh, one of the hashtag heroes, uh, says, uh, will Trey Adams be ready to start if we can't re-sign Daryl Williams? We talked about this on a previous episode. Paul says that uh, for as good as Williams played this year, Trey Adams has like about 10 minutes of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Trey Adams. And I, that's, I like Trey Adams an awful lot, which goes to speak of how well Daryl Williams played. How Higher potential. Oh, no, this is Williams' ceiling. Yeah, what we saw this year was his ceiling. No, then you think Adams could be better? I think, I no, I don't think Adams is going to be a, a better NFL tackle than Daryl Williams is right now. Okay. Right. But again, sometimes you got to take, you know, if you're going to look at Trey Adams and say, okay, well, we're going to be signing a quarterback long term. Daryl Williams is like 28. You know, Trey Adams is 24. I think, the, I don't know. The, uh, the argument. That, you're, that you have is this. Is Trey Adams on par with Ty Nasek? Also a free agent. Also good. He's going to be gone. But my point is this. He's cheaper than Ty Nasek. Yeah. You're not going to spend $8 million for yeah. Trey Adams. Totally. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, I think it was 8 Let's see here. Stephen Collins, what contracts can be reworked to free up some money for additions? Uh, Dawson's the guy, but I'm not a GM. Is he worth the money he is being paid? Uh, Dawkins looked really looked rough against Kansas City. Let's be real. A lot of guys looked rough against Kansas City. Yeah. Mongo got thrown around. Morris got thrown around. Williams yeah. was, was being beat up. I, for the money that Dawkins is making, he's actually not poorly paid. Like he, it's he's not at the top of the class, but he's not at the bottom of the class. Like it's a good middle of the road deal. It's a reflection right on his play. It's a Full, it's a total. It's a totally average deal. I think it reflects his play. I mean, I. I think in two we years that contract name. looks great. Yes. In two years that contract looks great. Because you're, you're he's only going to get name. better. Right. But the contracts for tackles at that time will skyrocket. Yeah. Because they are. They are piss poor at this point. Yeah, tackles coming out of college are so, so bad. bad. They're so bad. <laughs> um, I think if you're going to rework any deal, you're going to rework John Brown. Because you have to. If you, you want him to stay. cut him, if you you're going to cut him otherwise. Why? Why would you cut him? Eight million dollars he saves you by by letting him go. Eight mil, dude. He's not. You think you he can't pay that. He's going to have to because he's a six man on the open market right now. He's a five and a half million dollar. If you're Buffalo and you're already over the cap, got to be close. So that's what I mean. He's a five and a half million dollar player on the on the open market. He's not an eight million dollar player. You restructure him or you cut him. You do one of those two things. Um, well, eight million dollars in the third year sure is very helpful right now. Is what is what probably brought him to Buffalo. So. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, Chris Taroni, should we bring Fitzy home? John, Matt Barkley's a free agent. Do you bring Ryan Fitzpatrick back? I think you're talking about Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, Rhino? Bring Rhino back? Yeah. Why not? I'm going to disagree and say, I'm, I I love Ryan Fitzgerald. I know why. I, I love Ryan Fitzgerald. I know why. But he has the typhoid Mary to any quarterback room because he literally just replaces whatever you have going on in the position. doesn't matter how good it's going, how bad it's going. At some point, you're going to get just a little too much of Ryan Fitzgerald. Just a, 
just a little too much. Rhino has destroyed so many promising careers in his life. <laughs> He's the, I, the he's guy. Been the widow maker. The, he, he's been yeah. the widow maker. He's wore he's worn seventeen different jerseys and in fifteen years, and he's amazing. <laughs> he's been. You, he always. I starts. love him. He always starts. He, he how started could you stay in, in the league when this Palmer long? got hurt. He started in Tennessee when they were just giving up. He started in Tampa when they still had Jameis Winston. Like he started. He start. He started with the Jets. When they didn't know what they were doing, he he started with Miami. When they didn't know what they were doing, he started everywhere. You bring him in, he's going to at some point start for you, and I don't know if I'm okay with that. No. Although the story would be wonderful. Um, five eight five Farmy says, "Is smoke gone?" No. Is that another episode? Yes. Okay, we'll talk about that. Another episode. Yeah, I don't think he's gone. Okay, uh, Dan. I'm so sorry for this. Dan Van Cohenberg, that's what you're getting. Uh, JJ, question mark, JJ Watt. I caught a hashtag shorts episode. Did you see any of those, by the way? I saw it. Those are those amazing. Those are fun, aren't they? You just do those. 57 seconds. You have to film the, you have to film it with the camera up. 57 seconds. I would love to do those. Yeah, they're quick and easy. Would hashtag Nation like to do any of them? We, yeah, I, people were watching them. They're, people, the hashtag shorts were, were Send us your shorts, guys. They might make an episode. A nice salute. Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> he All pulls right. down your shorts. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> JJ Watt financially is impossible. With, yes. It's a yes, nice right story. Now. Yeah. It would be a great ad. However, this is not a Mario Williams scenario where they have cap room to give him this, this. The Mario Williams deal, after it was all said and done, ended up being three years for 66. I think a lot of people would have taken that. Yeah. Not the five year, a hundred and whatever million it was. Um, but JJ Watt, even though, as Paul said on the short, $17 million, you can allocate a lot of that to bonus, roster bonus in future years. He's getting up there in age. He's a name. He can make an impact for your team. However, financially, right now, due to the guys you're going to have to sign eventually, I don't know if it's feasible from a business standpoint. So there's two arguments, two schools of thought here. And I said this in the comments section of the hashtag shorts video because people were saying, well, he's always hurt. And in three of the last five years, yes, that's true. He's played a full season or less than half the season in three of the last five years. <laughs> Mixed bag. One or the other. Right? So three of the last five years, he's missed at least half the season. But two of the last three years, he's played the full season. Right? So you kind of... It depends on how you want to see that. Yeah, but we know the way time works. You get injured more as you get older. But he's also playing a huge snap percentage in Houston. And if you were what to was bring, he playing? Like 70-something? It was, it was in the 80s. Stop. Still, it was still in the 80s. 80s? I think so. I'll double check that. Are they just trying to the wear him out so he doesn't want to he be was the, He was the lifeblood of their team. What else did they have going on for them on the that's, that's a good point. So I think if you're Houston, you have to cut him because nobody's trading for that contract. Nobody's touching. Nobody's going to rework $17 million. Anybody that acquires them is going to have to extend them, and I don't think anybody's going to want to do that. You're not going to, you're not going to endear yourself to any of the fan base down there. By trading him or by cutting him? By cutting him. If you cut him, you let him pick his own destination. I think that's the direction that they would try and spin. We're going to let J.J. pick where he's going to try and where he thinks he can win a Well, Bowl. you could say this. You know how they do a sign and trade? Yeah. What if they reworked his deal for him in Houston? Where they took on some of the salary? Yeah, but right now he's free to trade because it's all base salary. So it costs Houston nothing. To I know, trade but here's I know it costs right now it costs Houston nothing, but yeah. no one's you said is gonna take that contract. Right. However, if let's, let's say it's let's make it simple. Seventeen million dollars. Mm -hmm. Let's say seven goes to a bonus and tens the base. Right. If you're a team who you think is one player away, like we saw Milano earlier. Ten million dollars a lot 10 million easier. Ten million dollars a lot easier, yeah. but so let's say the Texans get a, a draft pick. They're eating seven million on the cap, but and they actually they can allocate that over two years, can't they? They trade them. They would be able to. Yeah, depending on 60, how they, 40, they 60 60 40, 60 percent, 40 percent. We'll explain all that. And Paul has an, an article on at uh, htechsports.com about that. But with the what it where? Okay, so the Texans say, listen, we're gonna base salary ten, bonus is seven. We'll eat the bonus. Give us a fifth rounder. You got JJ Watt for ten million. I think J.J. Watt at 60% snap count is a much different animal than J.J. Watt at 90% snap count, which is the last two years has played 90% 
44% because they only played half the game. So span that out of the whole season, 88%. Well, and that. last year he played 91% of defensive snaps. So I think 91%. 91%. So I think that is so is that's this square, the deal. Is this it, square peg in a round hole? What do you mean? Because Buffalo likes to filter guys. Mm-hmm. Are you leaving him on the field? Are you leaving him on? <laughs> are you leaving him on the field longer because he's used to playing that snap count, or are you going to cycle him through? I'm doing what uh, what Green Bay did with Julius Peppers. Green Bay signed Julius Peppers. He was in there on first downs and third downs. That was the deal. He played every first down, every third down. That was it. Right, like it. brought him right about sixty percent snap count. He was super effective. He was still able to communicate across your defense. He's a leader. He's a great clubhouse guy. He's there to win. He's there for all the right reasons. He fits the culture. But, I mean, on the open market, he's going to make $8 million a year. I think if you could somehow figure out how to convince him to take $8 million a year, I'm I'm, I'm cutting Vernon Butler and signing J.J. Watt, and I'm not even thinking about it. Like, I'm not even – that's not even a question. It's like, okay, hello. <laughs> like, just like, okay, goodbye, hello. Like, if you're going to tell me that basically Buffalo could figure out a way to trade Vernon Butler for J.J. Watt at the same salary, I'm come to Papa. J.J. Watt at 60% snap count is a completely different animal. Do you disagree? No, I don't know. But financially, I'm I don't. Yeah, I don't know how the money's going to work. Uh, is, there an inevitable, is there an inevitable upcoming reduction in salary cap? And do you think trading out of first round picks and try to accumulate other picks is a smart option. I think that's a great question. Navy P asks it. Maybe. Um, so salary cap stuff. I know this bores a lot of people salary cap right now. We don't know where it's going to sit. We're not going to know for a few more weeks. I would imagine it's going to be around the $182 million mark, which is a reduction, yes. right? Yes. And then I would expect it to stay there for the next two seasons. So this upcoming season, the season after. Yeah. So the theory there is that they would reduce it down to 175 to $178 million, and then the following year it would increase. Or they could just say, we'll go to $182 million and we'll just not increase it the next two seasons, right? I have a feeling that's probably where it's going to land. Well, for the most part, now, is it a big deal? Well, the CBA didn't plan for – I mean, the CBA is written to account for the cap always going up. Yeah, really. That's they, there's no triggers. I mean, you, you said yeah. That, yeah. There's no triggers in it for if there's a loss in revenue. There never has been a trigger in it, and we clearly saw what that looks like. But the other side of that is, for the most part, I'm saying numbers wise, financially, really the the rise in the salary cap was really just accounting for the rookie deals, mm-hmm. the majority of the time, because rookie contracts that you'd have to sign if everyone signed usually varies between eight and sixteen million dollars, mm-hmm. and that's when the cap was kind of going. Yep. At that rate, you know, 10 to 12, something like that. So a lot of that times you could say, okay, the increase in salary cap, that's our rookie deal. Right. All right. Can't do that this Not year. Not doing that anymore. Okay. Nope. Which means you're going to see an increase in, in veteran signings. The second thing is that your draft capital is that much more, because it's the cheapest option, it's that much more magnified. Now, which what the question was, I think, was talking about quality versus quantity. Yeah. Do you want a first round pick or two third round picks? I mean, it's it's an interesting thought process. Well, it is, especially since those picks late, like those picks 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, those get those picks get traded often. Yes, they often get traded cuz somebody them. wants a fifth year option. Right. Which going on your prediction with this cap going down going down, rookie deals if you can extend it for another year, that's going to be a big deal. It is a big deal. Right, especially that late because you're paying the average of three to twenty fifth at the position. I mean, we're talking not we're not talking expensive money. We're not. We're probably talking depending on the position, it's, it could be a ten to fifteen million dollar to fifty year extension. Right. Just as an Unless example. Unless it's a quarter. Million. Just as yeah. an example, yeah. OJ Howard. OJ Howard was drafted late in the first round. They picked up his fifth year option, six million dollars. Right. I tight mean, ends just, really though, I mean tight ends. But I think it's a fair representation of what that it number is. looks like. It is. Right. So, do you trade out of the 30th spot? Um, you could. You could, yeah. I mean, unless there's a player, do the Bills feel, let me rephrase, do the Bills feel they're one player away? No. 
I think they made that clear in their post game press conference. No, you, no, they're not because they're losing a lot too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you kept this exact same team together mm-hmm. and added one more player, do you think they make the bowl? No, yeah. they don't. So then you would champion the okay. We're we're going to trade out of the thirtieth pick. We get a second rounder in twenty twenty two. We get another third round in twenty twenty one, and then we get a sixth rounder in twenty twenty one. So like that, I, I don't know. It'll depend before that happens, before the thirtieth pick, who sets the bar for the trades. Because remember, Miami messed it up the one year mm-hmm. by trading for Deion Jordan. Sure did. Yeah. Um, so whoever sets the tone earlier in the draft about trading picks, that that'll. Um, so I'm going to make a very bold statement. Are you ready for this very bold statement? For the future of Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds, this is the most important draft of their careers in Buffalo. And the reason I'm going to say that, right, this draft is the most important one for their future in the next, looking backwards and forwards. So backwards the last three years, forwards the next three years, this is the most important draft. And the reason that is because these players are going to set the table for what's affordable in the future, right? Because you know Josh and Tremaine are coming off their deal sooner or later, yep. right? This class is going to be what supports them while they're in the early stages of the first contract, right? This class is the one that you're really going to be looking to resign. Like, let's be honest about the guys that we've had on this roster already. We were in a, we were rebuilding. The guys that are up to be resigned were part of a rebuild process. So are you are you going to do that again? Are you going to bring back players that you attempted to rebuild? Or are you just going to bring in fresh players and just assume that the culture at this point has seeded its way in and you can build the players up to be what you want them to be? These players might not be impactful year one, but they're going to be impactful year two. And that's when Allen and Tremaine are right before their contract, their rookie contracts expire. That This draft class is, is paramount. I think which, which ties into that is this. You can't win less than 10 games this year. Oh, God, no. Yeah, you can't. For that to take hold, like you said, this draft class. I thought you were going to say for Edmonds and Allen, Mm -hmm. because this draft class is going to determine the 30th pick, they're either going to take a lineman in front of Allen or they're going to take a lineman in front of Edmonds. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's why I thought you were going with that. But the point is this. If they draft as they draft this year, and they only have nine wins. I'm not saying nine and seven again. What I'm saying is if they do not. That's what you are saying. If, no, no, I'm saying if they don't. <laughs> if they have eight, if they have seven, if they don't have a winning record right. this year, mm. it's good. It doesn't matter who they pick because that support system and the culture will take a hit. I just think the culture will take a little bit of a hit in that respect because, hey, you had all these players that came in, your support system that you had prior. Now you brought in a new support system drafting. What happened? You know, Mar, I'm just going to bring this up, and we're going to end the episode on this. The one thing that we always talked about, why is Carolina the gold standard, right? Why were why was Buffalo just trying to bring in everything Carolina, yep. right? This upcoming season will let us know whether they break that trend. You know, the Carolina this. This is Carolina, up and down. They win, win. Hey, we won, we won 11 games. Oh, we won four. Okay, well, we're going up. That's an old ass episode. That's an old ass episode. That's an old You're ass old, episode. dude. You are freaking old. <laughs> you remember that one. You're an OG. Yeah, you are. <laughs>